What's going on, Geminites? Gem Mint here. It's Wednesday, March 4th. We're going to do today's new comic book day review, so stay tuned. There's no Barry Allen, reverse flash, they can't stand it. Comic flow, they can't stand it. I'm incredible, unforgettable. Something like Gem Mint Collectibles, A. All right, guys, before we get started, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell, and the like button. This video is sponsored by ThatSpidermanBooth.com, who has $30 mystery boxes. You can get $10 off by using the code GEMMINT at checkout. The giveaway prize for this box, which runs from today until Saturday, is a Spider-Man 3 CGC 9.6, signed by Stan Lee and Todd McFarlane. But wait. There's more. We're also partnering up with our boys over at KRS Comics, who I know before we even started the channel, and they're blowing up and doing their thing with their exclusive variants. We have a code where you can get 15% off their entire store, and that code is good for life. It's not just one per customer, so make sure to use that code GEMMIN at checkout. They have a brand new Natalie Sanders cover for the Catwoman number one, the whole 100 page. 80th anniversary spectacular issue that comes out in April. Well, their exclusive goes live this Friday. They have the regular cover and they have the Virgin variant. You can get 15% off by using Gem Mint. And man, you got to check out their other stuff. They just had that Mike Mayhew, Psylocke, Hellions number one variant too, which is incredible. They offer CGC 9.8 signature series. So definitely check out my boys at KRS Comics. All right, that's enough of all that. Let's jump into the comics. So first of all, Marvel shot us a couple of issues so that we were able to take an early look. The first one I want to talk about is the Scotty Young and Humberto Ramos Strange Academy. This is a 30-page number one issue with a ton of first appearances. And it's kind of like Xavier's School for Gifted Mutants, but with magic instead of mutants. This whole new generation of sorcerer supremes or magicians and you have like two kids from asgard you have a frost giant you have like the son of dormammu you have a lot of like next generation type of characters could be a spec book some of these characters may have legs but either way scotty young has a way of writing that is just interesting and fun and you just keep moving forward humberto ramos put a lot of effort into this and it shows a lot of uh, emotion conveyed in their faces and the overall fantasy atmosphere of the book was dope, man. So Strange Academy number one was a, was a good pickup. All right, we got the Margaret Stoll Spider-Man Noir issue one out of five. I mean, this was okay. I haven't been reading Spider-Verse. I mean, I'm familiar with the character, obviously, from past runs and from the Into the Spider-Verse movie. I just don't know who this is really for. I guess you got to be a really big Spider-Man fan, a Spider-Man Noir fan. You know, it's taking place in this alternate reality Peter Parker is a private eye. This takes place in the 40s. Uh, Aunt May, Mary Jane, J. Jonah Jameson, they all know that he's the Spider-Man of that era. It's weird because he has like a good relationship with J. Jonah. He's not like a pushover like Peter Parker. He's more of like a private eye, adult, uh, and also a vigilante. You know, the artwork was really good. The artwork was very like, I want to say it had like a, like a charcoal type of vibe to it, if that makes sense. But the art was by Juan Ferreira. And it was good. So Spider-Man Noir, it was just okay. So we have Marvel number one. I think this is a four-issue miniseries. Now, this was originally a miniseries 30 years ago that was written and drawn and everything by Alex Ross. Then they have Marvel's X, which is out right now, which is on like two issues. This is just Marvel. And uh, I don't know. It's kind of like two old-school stories sandwiched by this nightmare in the dreamscape type of story. And the first story was a Spider-Man story, very artsy looking. It was kind of weird. Like there was even this panel where it says, if this was back in the day, I would have been back at home round two with Mary Jane or something like that. I, I, put, I posted it on Twitter. I was like, what? And then you had like this old Avengers story that takes place after Avengers 3 from the 60s. Uh, so I don't know, man. I don't know what they're really doing with this run. I wasn't really digging it. So I forgot I wanted to talk about Image Comics. So Image sends us the PDFs for all the comics of the week. And, you know, I was going through it and it wasn't really anything for me to read because a lot of this stuff, like Birthrights on issue 42, I'm not caught up. Dead Eyes Trade Paperbacks coming out. That's dope. You guys should pick that up. I've got the singles. Farmhand 14, I hear great things. But again, it's issue 14. I'm not caught up. Uh, Man Eaters One Shot, I didn't even look at. Marked 5. Uh, again, I haven't read one through four. I read this Mercy one. I couldn't get into it. It wasn't really for me. What was this even about? It was like, um, yeah, I read the whole issue. It kind of takes place like in older times, like in a witch hunt time. I don't even remember. I read it. I couldn't get into it. Unearthed six came out. I'm not caught up. And 
uh, Out Dark Chu, issue one. Oh, I haven't read that. You know, I haven't read any Chu. I have like the six, uh, like deluxe editions, but Outer Darkness Chu. Damn, I gotta get caught up on Chu. So, man, sometimes Image has a lot of stuff that I am reading, like Oblivion Song or Gideon Fall, Spawn. I was reading Dead Eyes. Obviously, that's over now. I gotta step my game up with Image. All right, let's jump into uh, or continue with Marvel with Marauders 9, Jerry Dugan. This one, man, opened up super strong. I was like blown away with what happened in the beginning of these panels here. But you have this Yellow Jacket story. If you remember, Yellow Jacket is kind of doing that whole, what's that old ass movie, Journey into this, um, you know, where they're in a submarine that gets real small. I forget. Yellow Jacket's inside of Pyro, trying to infiltrate Krakoa, trying to uh, send information back to the uh, the junior mafia of the Hellfire Club, whatever those kids are called. Emma Frost is badass in this, man. That's pretty much all I'm going to say about that. Excalibur 8, super whack. I really just... I can't get into Excalibur at all. And then this whole storyline where they're hunting these war cats and they need to bring back the five skulls to Apocalypse so he could do this ritual to do something. I don't even remember. Wasn't into it. It's going to be... Be another controversial issue you're going to see on a lot of websites too. Christopher Cartwell on Doctor Doom issue 6. So here's the thing. Issue 6, there was one issue I didn't like. I didn't like issue 5 at all. But they won me back over with this issue 6, man. Doctor Doom and Kang the Conqueror riding ho like hobos on the subway. Kicking a hobo out of the subway. Roasting each other. Doctor Doom acting more like Doctor Doom. Being a little bit more badass now. I, I kind of like where they're going with Dr. Doom now. They've redeemed themselves here. Daredevil 19, Chip Zdarsky. This is my pick of the week. See? Kind of threw you a little loop there. This is my pick of the week. This was an awesome issue, man. You have no cops are allowed to go to Hell's Kitchen, right? We have some cops who are finally growing a pair and deciding to go to Hell's Kitchen to help everybody. But you have the Owl who sent a hit squad of the Rhino, Bullseye, Crossbones. And they're tearing ish up, man. Then you have kind of like this whole... The people rebelling back against the oppressors. You have Matt Murdock coming through and doing what needed to be done at the end of this issue. It was dope. Love Daredevil. Love Chip Zdarsky. Pick of the week. Let's talk about uh, Rescue 2020, number one, and Iron Man 2020, issue three. Man, I'm just not really digging this Iron Man run. I don't want to give up on it. I don't want to... I'm, I'm already, like, almost halfway invested. So, um, Pepper Potts is Rescue. She's basically trying to hunt down... I was lost on this. Tony Stark's real mother and his real father was not Howard Stark. What the hell's going on? What did Dan Slott do in the previous run, man? But they're trying to basically get a strand of hair, some DNA from Tony Stark's real mother so that they can resurrect him. Weird, man. And in issue three of Iron Man, you know what? It wasn't really that bad now that I think about it. It had a very dope fight scene between Arno Stark and and mark one or the the tony star consciousness in some fake body but the whole robot rebellion thing is super lame anytime they have herbie or all the other robots that are like trying to rise up it's not like terminator robots it's like super whack toaster looking robots and uh, they need to do something quick but it looks like this event's going to be a dud jumping over to dc i picked up this superman's villains issue one or a one shot or whatever it is and it kind of lets you know where it's picking up after, I guess, Superman as Clark Kent outed himself, kind of like Spider-Man Civil War style. And this is just dealing with the aftermath of that. How is it affecting everybody at the Daily Planet? How is it affecting all his villains, his parents? And that's kind of what this is. It's really kind of an, an unnecessary book, but the stuff with Mongo was really cool. Who was this written by? It had a bunch of little stories. You had like Bendis, Fraction, Hauser, Hitch. You had a lot of uh, different mini stories in here kind of going through how it's affecting these other people. And what happened with Supergirl? Is she, like, was she infected by the, uh... Is she one of the infected from that whole, like, storyline? I don't know. So check this out. From DC Black Label, Strange Adventures number one. This is Tom King's run, who, uh, is coming off of a lot of hate off of Batman. But people loved his vision, and they loved his... The Lantern book, right? Wasn't it, uh, Omega Men? Anyway, this feels like he's going to get more praise like with those runs and, and hopefully will redeem him from the Batman stuff. You know, this was being teased as like a four or five page at the end of a lot of issues over the last couple weeks. And I read it and I didn't even remember that when I jumped into this. 
But I jumped into this and I really liked it. I mean, you got this guy, is he a war hero from another planet or did he commit war crimes on other planets? Is he a hero or is he a villain? And the whole time he's like signing autographs at Barnes and Noble. He's getting this mixed bag reception from fans and haters. And it's kind of interesting, man. I'm really kind of digging and wanting to see where the rest of this goes. It's only a 12 issue series. Well, only, but that's how long most series last these days if they're lucky. But uh, I'm down for the ride, man. I was digging this one. Sticking with Black Label, we got this Daphne Byrne. Uh, this is from Hill House Comics, but it's written by written it's written by Laura Marks, art by Kelly Jones, Michelle Madsen. What is she, the colorist? You know, it's uh, it's a weird kind of horror esque book. The Daphne Byrne's running around with this spirit with her that nobody else can see, and it seems like he's kind of converting her to the dark side here. Her mother is. You know, so heavy and mourn from the loss of her husband that she's just spending all her time and money at this like psychic, and it looks like they're not good people. So I don't know. Daphne Burns okay. Last book I picked up a new number one from Boom Studios, King of Nowhere. Uh, this is by W. Maxwell Prince, Tyler Jenkins, and Hillary Jenkins. So this was a weird ass issue, man. It's like you, you're dealing with this guy. He he seems to be in a dream. He knows he's in a dream, so he's just trying to ride out this weird dream of deer people and fish-faced people and six-armed people, and he's at this bar, and he thinks he's either hallucinating or tripping or he's dreaming, but, you know, is he? That's kind of the premise here. It doesn't seem like he is. He seems like he's in this place called Nowhere, and um, I don't know. It was kind of, like, confusing, a little bit trippy. Artwork was very much matching that theme of being in a dreamscape, so... I don't know. I'll probably pick up an issue too, but it was kind of weird. All right, guys, that's the new comic book day reviews for today. Let me know what you thought about the books down in the comments below. I almost didn't have a pick of the week. Um, Strange Academy, uh, I was thinking about giving it to him, but man, Daredevil really won me over. Completely biased opinion. I love that run. But let me know what you guys like this week in the comments below. Did any of these uh, reviews make you want to pick something up that you weren't sure of? Let me know. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit the like. Hit the notification bell. And check out my two partners, man. Check out that SpidermanBooth.com, KRSComics.com. Use the code GenMint to get you some discounts and get you some cool stuff. And stay minty fresh. Peace. They're saying I'm harmless. Call me Cassidy. I'm bringing the carnage. Story to farthest. I'm a psychopath with a jumper's lap bipolar. So there's two of me and only one of you. So do the math. I leave you stunned without the flash. No Wally West. No Barry Allen. Reverse flash. They can't stand it. Comic flow. They can't stand it. I'm incredible. Unforgettable. Something like Jim and Collectibles. Hey. I'm a Gemini and we get it right. We amazing, no spider bites. So we doing reviews and getting the views. Been in my ooze, book it a week. Can see me Wednesday and see what I choose. If it's about comments, then I got the news. Subscribe to the channel and you never lose. Ayy, I show what I got and what's in the box. On top of my comments whenever they drop. Tell you what's coming and tell you what's hot. We keep it professional. We Gem and Collectible.